So how is the Chinese dream defined and obtained? Earlier, I spoke to the founding faculty director of the University of Chicago Center in Beijing. Professor Dali Yang gave us his perspective. This is, has been an issue of uh, debate and discussion among the Chinese themselves. When it was first raised by President Xi Jinping, it was much more speaking to the dream of national revival, especially in light of the history of humiliation and underdevelopment that China had witnessed in the last 150 years. But then once the concept became public and began to receive a lot of attention, people began to interpret it in their own ways. And increasingly, the emphasis has been to say, well, there is the need for national rejuvenation, national prosperity, and that's a uh, fine goal, but at the same time, you, how can you have national rejuvenation without the rejuvenation of the individual, of the household, in terms of prosperity and so on? So increasingly, the leadership has actually begun to refine the concept. President Xi Jinping himself, when on his visit to the United States, began to say, well, the Chinese dream is actually linked to the, and in fact, is connected to the American dream. So in that sense, actually, increasingly, people see the need uh, for example, uh, to link it to all sorts of good things, uh, whether it's the rule of law or, or, for that matter, in terms of prosperity, in terms of, uh, for example, education, the environment, and so on. And as a result, I, I think actually it's been subject to some uh, contention as well. Uh, as we just heard, President Xi Jinping calling uh, the Chinese dream both timely and profound. He also added that it encourages the Chinese people to pull together and work with all their might and with one heart to realize the great dream of a national revival. You mentioned revival, but can you elaborate on a revival of China? Well, this is actually, in many ways, it speaks to the fact that China 150, 200 years ago was tops of the world in terms of aggregate GDP. It has the largest economy, most population. It had a very significant continuous history uh, for 5,000 years or 3,000 years, depending on how you uh, calculate it. So in that sense, actually, there is this feeling that China needs to recover its pride, uh, prideful place in the world of nations. And in that sense, there is this collective vision for China to recover its place in the world. In many ways, actually, China has already attained a lot of it. It's already the second largest economy in the world, the largest exporter and trader. And of course, in many ways, it's a behemoth. It's a force to be contended with globally. But nonetheless, I think the leadership feels like it's connected to the fact that there needs to be national prosperity at a higher level. So their initial target is for 2020 or so. At that point, in fact, China, by PPP terms, would likely have the world's largest economy and, of course, obviously a great power. All right, Professor Dali Young, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us from Chicago.